If you are starting a summer internship, you are probably feeling excited but nervous at the same time. Internships are usually thought of as like a three-month-long interview, and interviews are without a doubt stressful. Now, this is true for most people. I remember being absolutely terrified of my first internship. I felt like there was no chance I was going to perform well, and I just wasn't ready for this real world that I kept being told about. But it doesn't need to be this way. In this video, I'm going to share with you the strategy that I used to relieve some of this stress and ultimately get a return offer from all three internships I did during college. Now, first and foremost, you need to focus on your intern project. In my case, each of my internships had a project that was about 12 weeks worth of work and created by my manager ahead of time. But here lies the issue that a lot of interns face. People are really, really bad at scoping out projects, even for themselves. I remember as a software engineer, I could almost never give you an accurate timeline for how long something was going to take. Now, this is something you get better at over time, but the issue will always be there. So how can we expect that an intern manager can create a timeline for an intern to work on a project when they haven't even met that intern yet? And the answer is we can't, it's basically impossible, so sometimes these projects end up way over or under scoped. So when you first get your project, what I recommend doing is breaking it down into smaller pieces, and then try to create a timeline. What do you want to accomplish each and every week? Now, of course, you won't have perfect clarity into this from the beginning, but you can try to get a high-level idea. This helps to create accountability. You want to make sure that your project doesn't turn into a school project where you have an entire semester to work on it, but you choose to do it all on the last day. Additionally, you need to make sure to have some padding. You don't want to be scheduling to complete a project on the last day of your employment because the reality is that you will fall behind. So instead, what I do is I make a timeline to finish one to two weeks early. That way, when I fall behind, I'm actually still on time. Okay, so now you have a timeline for your intern project, but you still need to execute on it. And for this, I have two primary tips to share. First of all, make sure to over communicate through the entire process. Ask for feedback constantly and make sure that you are aware of where you stand at all times. You should not be surprised by your midpoint feedback or if you get a return offer or not. You should know ahead of time where you stand. And when you get this feedback, I know it sounds obvious, but make sure to actually take action on it. I've been on both sides of the feedback conversation when no action is taken, and it's always uncomfortable when you have to give the same feedback twice. Additionally, when you have these conversations with your manager, make sure to share with them what your goals are. If they don't know what you want, then they can't cater their management style to help you achieve those goals and have the best experience possible. Second, ask lots of questions. You've probably heard the phrase, there are no bad questions. And this is sort of true, but I think it misses the mark a little bit. There might not be bad question ideas, but there are absolutely bad ways to ask a question and bad times to ask those questions. For timing, make sure that you have tried some amount of time to find a solution before asking the question. So the way I do this is I evaluate how long I think it's going to take somebody to answer the question. If I think it's going to take them less than two minutes to answer, then I make sure that I've spent five to ten minutes on trying to find the answer myself. And then if it is a longer question, so something that might take five or 10 minutes for someone to answer, then I make sure that I've spent maybe five to 15 or even 30 minutes trying to find a solution on my own. Additionally, determine if a question is blocking or non-blocking. If a question is blocking, meaning that you need the answer to do whatever you need to do next, then ask it immediately or once you've tried to find a solution for that amount of time. But if an answer is non-blocking, so you don't need this answer before you can move on, you have other work you can do, consider batching questions together. So write down a list of a few questions and ask them all at once. That way you don't have to force your manager or mentor or whoever it is to context switch super often. So if you ask them five questions in an hour, they aren't going to be able to get any of their own work done. But if you ask them five questions at once at the end of the hour, it's not going to be as big of a strain on their own work, and that's just, I think, the more respectful thing to do. That said, they're there to answer your questions, so please don't feel bad for interrupting them. 
And the reason this is so important is for the purpose of asking good questions. For example, what if I ask, how do I fix this bug? That's not a very good phrasing of a question. Instead, you can ask, I have this bug and these are the things I've tried. Can you point me in the right direction to figuring out how to solve it? See the difference there? It's subtle, but it makes a huge impact. I use a pretty basic formula to ask questions. It has three parts. First of all, you need context. What is the problem about? Second, you need to have some information on what you tried already. So this helps the person you ask the question narrow down an answer, but also just shows that you put in some effort yourself. And finally, you need an ask, but this should be focused on growth. So not can you fix this, but rather can you teach me how to fix this? Okay, so now you are crushing your intern project, but what else can you be doing to stand out as well as just have a better experience? Well, first of all, you need to make sure that you've smashed the like button as well as subscribed for future content. And then after that, make sure to talk to as many people as possible. Talk to interns and full-time employees and talk to managers and directors, anybody that you can get time with, whether it be over lunch or in an actual meeting, just try to talk to different people and from my experience, most people love talking to an enthusiastic intern and they will have a wealth of knowledge to share along with it just helps you build your personal network. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What if I'm falling behind on my intern project? What do I do then? Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, make sure to communicate this with your manager as soon as possible. The earlier you tell them this, the earlier they can help you make a plan to get caught up. And in addition to this, know that it's not necessarily your fault. Remember that whole thing about how it's impossible to make a timeline? Yeah, you could just have one of those projects that was scoped too large. Now, as a second piece of advice, and this one's going to be a little bit controversial, but you might just need to grind it out. If you're behind on your project, it might just help to work some extra hours. And this is not something I would ever recommend to a full-time employee, but as an intern, these few weeks of just grinding could be the difference of getting a return offer, which can absolutely change your life. So I think it'd be wrong of me to not recommend that as an option. In fact, I went into the office on July 4th, a company holiday, and I worked the entire day. And this was actually the most productive day I had of the entire summer. And if you're curious why it was so productive, make sure to check out this video up here that explains why it can be so productive if you work uninterrupted. Next, try to find ways to contribute beyond your intern project. From my experience, both as an intern and as a full-time engineer working with interns, the best way to stand out is to take initiative, do something beyond the assigned work, and to just sort of act like a normal full-time employee, as this is the role that you're essentially interviewing for. So this can mean that you could just improve on the project that was given to you, or you can start contributing to your team as a whole. So I know it's intimidating, but try to speak up in some meetings and give your opinions. Additionally, if you're just done with your project early or you're ahead of schedule, you can talk to your manager about potentially picking up some extra work. And most importantly, just try to have fun. I know internships are stressful. I was certainly stressed at times in mine, but what I found is that the more calculated of an approach you take, the less stressed you will be and the better you will perform. This is how I managed to get return offers from all of my internships, as well as I was able to just learn a lot and make some lifelong friends along the way. So if you did find these tips helpful, make sure to share them with your fellow interns, and I will see you in the next video.